Today we're joined by Mustafa Barghouti, who is a member of the Palestinian Legisl Legislative Council and a prominent, prominent Palestinian leader. Many thanks for joining us uh, live from Ramallah. Mustafa, let me ask you my question again. Uh, the decision by Trump to move the embassy to Jerusalem, it, it's ignited clearly this new wave of Palestinian resistance. The question is, what are these protests going to achieve that previous protests haven't achieved? Well, in my opinion, this popular nonviolent resistance, which has entered a very uh, strong stage uh, today, with the hundreds of thousands of Palestinians marching peacefully, is bringing back to the attention of the world uh, the reality of the situation here, that there is a system of occupation, uh, which is the longest occupation in modern history, that there are six million Palestinians who are refugees displaced from their own country at the hands of the Israelis. And that Jerusalem was, uh, uh, contrary to what Mr. Netanyahu claims, Jerusalem was never uh, the capital of the Jewish people for 3,000 years. The Jerusalem existed 1,000 years before any Jewish person uh, was in this land. And if it was a, a, a part of a Jewish state, it was only for very short periods of time. For Palestinians, Jerusalem is their capital. And uh, the fact that the United States has moved its embassy to Jerusalem and recognized it as a, a capital of uh, Israel uh, is, uh, means that the United States is participating with Israel in committing a war crime, which is annexing uh, land, occupied land, by force. Our demonstrations are bringing the message to the world, and they show that they are determined to get, that we are determined to get freedom and get our right to return to the land we were displaced from. Dr. Bakuti, it is, it is easy to point the finger at Israelis, but would it be fair to say that some of the frustration of the Palestinian people is actually down to their own uh, leadership uh, for its weakness, its inability to unite, its corruption? Isn't that part of the reason we're still here? Uh, this, is, uh, this, this would be a wrong way of looking at the matter. I mean, we have this weak leadership because the Israelis and the international community has pushed this leadership in this way. They <laughs> imposed on them Oslo Agreement, uh, which was nothing but a big act of deceit to Palestinians. They forced them to establish a huge security apparatus at the expense of other needs in the Palestinian people. And uh, they have uh, practically tried to uh, divide Palestinians as much as they could. And when we got unified, they boycott us. So uh, you cannot uh, uh, simply say that this is the fault of the Palestinians. We have our mistakes, of course. Mm. But the main problem is that there is a country called Israel that has displaced Palestinians by force, by massacres, for 70 years. This is a country that is occupying the rest of our land and that is oppressing us. It has uh, created one million arrests among Palestinians uh, during the last 50 years. Uh, it, it is keeping thousands of people in jails. It is making Gaza a big open prison. And now it is oppressing us even when we are peacefully demonstrating. During the last four weeks, they killed 50 Palestinians, uh, including two journalists, and injured no less than 1,500 with live ammunition while they were peacefully marching. The big question is, if that has happened in any other country, like Turkey or Russia or, 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 uh, or South Africa, the world reaction would be very different. But why Israel is allowed to be above international law and impunitive to international law, and why there is a consistent effort to blame the victim in this conflict? Mm. Well, uh, do you think uh, that these protests, uh, they have indeed uh, raised the attention of the world back on this Palestinian issue. Do you think the move by Trump uh, has, in fact, solidified support for the Palestinians globally? Do you think it will make a difference? I think it will, because what you can see today is that although the Americans and the Israelis are very happy with this move, they are really isolated. Uh, two countries only in the world are supporting this step, which is Guatemala and Paraguay. Uh, the rest of the world is boycotting these celebrations. Uh, the rest of the world is saying it's a wrong move. The rest of the world says that uh, you cannot have a solution without allowing Palestinians to have their own state. And the world is saying you cannot decide the future of Jerusalem unilaterally. And uh, that's why I think the United States decided to be isolated with Israel. And maybe this is a reflection of the isolationist policy of Mr. Trump, which is nothing but a reflection of the fact that the United States is finding great difficulty realizing it is not the only superpower in this world. Uh, we believe in our rights. We will struggle for our rights. 
We are now repeating the, uh, the, the very beautiful approach of Martin Luther King and Gandhi in peaceful marches. And we hope that the world will support our right for freedom. We are not against anybody. We are for our freedom and for our future. We want Palestinians to be equal to others. We want Palestinians to live in, in, in peace and prosperity. But we also know that we cannot achieve that without liberating our country from this system of oppression and apartheid that Israel has created. So where do you go next in terms of peace negotiations? Can peace talks resume without the U.S.? And if so, who would you like to lead those peace talks if it's not the U.S.? We're calling for an international forum because the United States cannot be a mediator since it is totally biased to Israel. Uh, and it is not only biased to Israel. Practically, their envoys are becoming the spokespersons for the Israeli government, including their ambassador, Friedman, and others who are, by the way, supporting settlers as well. And it has just been discovered that they were financially supporting extreme uh, groups uh, that are even outlawed in Israel. So uh, in our opinion, what we need is an international forum. And a solution can be found based on international resolutions, including UN Security Council resolutions and UN General Assembly resolutions, and not enforcing on us a situation of apartheid forever just because Israel is powerful and has uh, a lot of weapons and has an army. Uh, I believe, uh, though I believe I, I, no peace talks will ever work unless we change the balance of power. And I think we as Palestinians have found our way. Okay. Uh, peaceful protest, peaceful resistance combined with boycott, divestment, sanctions is the way we're going to. And that's to change the balance of power so that we can eventually achieve peace. Okay, Dr. Mustafa Bagoti, many thanks for speaking to us on TRT. Well, Dr. Bagoti, there, a member of the Palestinian Legislative Council.